Hello, it's famed pop star Billie Eilish. Just kidding, it's Ms. Weed in a floppy sweater. Wow, the magic of cinema. <laughs> Hi, it's day whatever of Borentine, and I'm doing great. Welcome to Ms. Weed Doesn't Know Anything. A channel where my dog cries in the background. And I post stuff. <laughs> it's usually related to school things. Sometimes it's not, but today it kind of is. It's a little more English language artsy with a little bit of history, but again, this is not supplemental education. This isn't even distance learning. This is just boredom. Imagine the letters boredom going like across the screen and it's really cool, but I don't know anything about cameras, so boredom. All right, today we're gonna be talking about blackout poetry. What's blackout poetry? You ask in your weird little child voices. Let me tell you, can you wait? Can you wait so I can tell you? Blackout poetry is, um, uh, actually a pretty historically cool piece of art that was created almost 250 years ago. Well, it started almost 250 years ago from this guy who was named Caleb Whiteford. He was one of Ben Franklin's BFFs and he wrote a bunch of puns in a newspaper that you had to kind of decipher uh, as you read the newspaper to figure it out. And thus, Blackout poetry was born. In its current form today, blackout poetry actually looks quite different from the original inception, but it's gone through a lot in its history. And I thought I'd tell you a little bit about it before we experiment with making our own. Cause I can't help but geek out about stuff. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I've gotten my notes. Blackout poetry then became an inspiration for uh, art forms used by the Dada movement. The Dada movement was an art, an anti-art movement that was created after World War I. People were really angry about the violence that had plagued their countries during World War I and the nationalism and the greed and war in general. And they wanted to make a statement. So they created this anti-art movement called Dada, D-A-D-A. -A. Look it up if you've got time. And you've got time. Anyway, um, the Dada movement involved a lot of different so different sort of kinds of art, but one of them was a performance piece where a person would cut up, an artist would cut up newspapers and then just mix up the headlines in a hat and then just randomly rip out, cut up headlines and create a whole poem there on the spot. Um, I'm imagining it's some sort of like send up of taking things too seriously or of making, interpretation, like interpreting the media or something like that. But traditional blackout poetry isn't quite so anti, though it can be if you wanna make it that way. But traditional, uh, today, traditional blackout poetry is used to give life to something that's already there or to sort of divorce yourself from what's written on the page and then just use the words that speak to you. It's a, a very free, but also constrained form of poetry because you're not really looking to write something. You're looking more for what comes out at you, what, what explodes the, the <laughs> You're looking for something that interests you and then seeing where you can go with it. It could make sense. It could not make sense. It could just be however many times you can find the words fart written on a page. I'm actually really interested to see that if you do that. My dog is very unhappy. Bjorn!
Corn. He's so sad. Bjorn, do you want to say something to the people? What do you want to say? He says, take me outside, Mom. You're awful. All right, I'm going to do that. I'll be right back. That is done. For those of you in the internet land wondering how Bjorn is handling this little COVID-19 pandemic, the answer is not well. He's decided that uh, all of his toys are not enough and he's decided to claim as his this teacup and this mirror, which he has since broken because those are not Bjorn things. If I come back from this with a cool fuzzy vest that looks weirdly like that white dog you saw earlier, don't worry about it, it's fine. Just kidding, I love him, he's just an idiot. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. What we're talking about is blackout poetry. You can use anything to make a blackout poem. Uh, a letter somebody's done with, a piece of junk mail, a piece of newspaper, if you still have people in your house who read the news, a magazine, or my favorite, an old book. I really recommend using old books because there's something just really fun about ripping the pages out. And you know, during this time of quarantine, Sometimes you just gotta rip some stuff to shreds. Whatever, we're all handling this differently. Uh, ask your parents, ask your guardians, ask the people around you if they have any old books that you can rip to shreds and use them to make beautiful art. It's art. They can't say no, they could say no. And if they do, you've gotta look for something else. I'm going to include a little process video about how I'm approaching blackout poetry. I was lucky enough to run frantically into my classroom and grab a bunch of books and rip them to pieces and use them for this video. But if you don't have books around, you can use magazines again, you can use junk mail, whatever you find, whatever speaks to you. You could black out the whole page using Sharpie or you could only black out part of it and make a design, which is what I'm doing. But if you wanna black out the whole page, it'll look something like this, which is a blackout poem that I wrote. A quick warning before I go into the process video, Sharpie has a real strong scent, just super strong. And I always forget about that before I do blackout poetry, but yeah, be in a place that's well ventilated or you're, you're going to start feeling vaguely ill. And it's not COVID-19. It's the fact that you've been inhaling permanent marker for the better part of a day. What am I letting you do? Here I am trying to give you back brain cells and we're just all killing them with our Sharpies. Ah, well, what are you going to do? It's art. I want that on a t-shirt. All right, I'm gonna head over to the process video. Whee! And then I will show you my final piece. And here are the four steps of writing a blackout poem. Austin Cleon, Cleon, who knows, has a fantastic Instagram with many examples. But step one, is find a page. <gasps> oh, well done, right hand. You found a page. Step two is read the page. <laughs> and if you were to read this page in its entirety, you'd notice that like, wow, that's really shag. And my right hand is not wrong. It's a pretty depressing page. So you can keep with the tone of the original work or you can pick up the phrases or words that most intrigue you and draw a box around them. You can cut out parts of words or you can cut out almost the entirety of, wor of a word to make a new one. 
Then your final step will be to cover over the rest. Prosper! You can black it out entirely, which is what a lot of people do, or you can do what I'm trying to do here, which is to draw a design around the thing and then color over it so that all that's remaining are the words, which as you can see are related to coffee and noises because those are the two things I love most in this world. As per always, please ask your parents before you randomly start ripping apart books. Parents tend to get mad when you just randomly rip things up. I don't know why. It's a mystery we'll never solve, kids. But you could always take their tax documents and just rip them to shreds. Make art. I didn't say that. I've never said that. I will deny it in court. Hello, beans. This is what I ended up with. Ah! As you can see, the words are backwards. I promise, they look different to me. <laughs> um, so, you can do it with color. You can do it with straight black Sharpie. You can do it with pencil, pen, paper mache, the blood of the innocent. No, 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 no. No. The poem that I wrote, uh, which came from a pretty sad text called, I think, uh, the Bedouin something or other, I don't remember, uh, goes like this. The coffee grinders began their work. Beans rattling, ta 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 tum, ta 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 tum. Staring at the dawn, clear mind, spirit strong, handed days beautiful as poems, deep and true. Life itself, proud, insignificant, and loved. Does it make a lot of sense? No. Does it have a lot of words I like? Yes. So am I ultimately rather proud of it? Of course I am, because my ego is the size of West Texas. But in all honesty, Kinder Beans, you should be proud of whatever it is you create, because you made art, and that's cool. You might as well give it a try. It's not like you've got other things to do. This is Ms. Weed signing off from the coronavirus pandemic of 2020, stuck inside my house, so bored, but not bored enough to clean. <laughs> oh man, I gotta clean. All right, I'm gonna go clean. I hope you're well. I hope you're being kind to each other. I hope you're being kind to yourselves. Stay well, stay distant. We will see you soon. We will make it through this, promise. Yeah.